Hey friends, welcome to our devotion today. It's an absolutely beautiful and gorgeous day. I want to encourage you to enjoy it, whether it's look out the window or, or go for a walk or at least sit outside on your porch and rock. It is beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's actually a perfect day for football. Football, you may ask. Well, actually, right now it's middle school and high school football seasons for many of our students because of the pandemic. I know it's a little weird to have football in March. But, you know, I went to a game just last week. It was Jackson, my oldest, first game of the season. And as we sat out there in the beautiful weather that was there, I was reminded of something about football, though. There's a lot of downtime in football. See, there's a few moments of excitement with running and catching, but then there's a lot of huddling and running in and off the field. In fact, you know, in the average pro game with 15-minute quarters or 60 minutes for the whole game, only 11 minutes of those are actually plays being run. The other 49 minutes are downtime. Well, do you know, unfortunately, sometimes our Christian lives look like that. We have just brief moments of, of loving God or serving God and a whole lot of downtime. Well, as we study today and for the next several weeks, Titus in the book of Titus will tell us that, that we are not to have downtime. That in fact, our faith and knowledge of God should spur us on to godliness, to good works, that we should be actively serving and loving God every second of every minute of every hour of every day. So I want to encourage you over the next several weeks, we'll be doing this every Tuesday and Thursday, to join us in the book of Titus. Now every Tuesday and Thursday, I want you to go ahead and read the whole book. It's only four chapters, but read it each Tuesday and Thursday for the next three weeks and just see how God can continue to speak through you in different ways each time you read through it. And then don't forget to join us on Wednesday nights for prayer meeting and for Bible study. So let's start today with just an overview of Titus. First, press pause and go read those first four chapters. Then you've read, you've read it, come back and join us. But as you've come back and join us, let's, let's read those first four chapters of chapter one, those first four verses of chapter one, excuse me, and let's go ahead and look at who the author is, who the recipient is, and what the purpose of this letter is. So look at chapter one, verses one through four. It says, Paul, a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness and the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, and which now, at his appointed season, he is brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior, to Titus, my true son in our common faith, grace and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Savior. Now, let's look through these characters or these people, if you will. First, we're introduced to Paul. Now, who is Paul? Remember, Paul used to be Saul. And Saul was one who went around persecuting the early church, who persecuted the Christians of that day and time. In fact, let's, let's look back at that, if you will. Turn with me to Acts chapter 9 and, and look at the first few verses in Acts chapter 9. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's people. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, or who were Christians, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. See, Paul, Saul as it was at the time, is on this mission to arrest as many Christians and persecute and even have them stoned as in the case of Stephen. He just, he just hates the church. And so he's on a mission to destroy it. But then something happens. God appears to Saul on the road to Damascus and he blinds him. And he, and he speaks to him and he sends him to go wait for a messenger. And this messenger's name was Ananias. And Ananias goes and, and he heals Paul. And he is hesitant at first to go heal Paul. But God says something specific about why I, I, Ananias must go heal Paul. And that comes in verse 15. Look what it says. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument, that being Saul, being Paul, to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how he must suffer for my name. See, God had chosen Paul or Saul to become Paul, to spread the gospel, to speak to the Gentiles about the hope that is Jesus Christ. 
And so as we talk about this letter, how, how Paul authors this letter, remember this comes from a man who, who was persecuting the Christians, and now because Jesus Christ has showed up in his life, he went from persecuting Christians to trying to get everybody to be a Christian. It radically changed his life. It changed his actions and his words and his behavior. Now, if you look at verse 4, you, you hear who Paul's writing to, and that's Titus. And Titus, as we find out from other scriptures in 2 Corinthians 8, 23 and Galatians 2, 25, was a, a, a partner of Paul's, somebody who went along with them and helped spread the gospel. Now, Titus is believed to be a very young man. And now Paul, this one who's been called by God to spread the gospel, is speaking to Titus, another one, a younger one, called to spread the gospel. And this is all happening in, a, in an area called Crete. Now, Crete was known for their Zeus worship. Man, they, they had a lot of idols and a lot of false worship. They had a lot of bad morality. And so Paul is writing Titus to say, hey, guess what? I need you to know something. That, that even though you're young and even though that there's a lot of bad teaching out there, even though there's a bad morality, I need you to know something really important. And look what he says again in verse 1. He says, to further the faith to God's elect and their knowledge to the truth. Hear that? that line of thought he says i'm writing you titus i'm talking to you so that your faith will grow in knowledge and your knowledge to godliness in other words so that your faith will turn into wisdom and your wisdom will turn into action see here's the truth of the matter just like we talked about on sunday that we can't just be hearers of the words we have to be doers it's echoed here in titus and so over the next several weeks we want to pause and hear god grow our faith grow our knowledge so that we can do more good. Now there's a difference in doing good in our way and doing good in God's way. Doing good in our way, we think we try more, or we try to do better. This is not what it's talking about. As we read in Titus, this is about surrendering to the goodness of God in such a way we're transformed into who he's called us to be. So I want to invite you to join us on this journey for the next three weeks. Like I said, every Tuesday and Thursday, as we jump into Titus, I encourage you to read it every Tuesday and Thursday. And just glean from it the wisdom of God that will grow our faith, that will grow our knowledge, that will help us to do good. God has called us to do good. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity for the next several weeks, God, just to spend some time in Titus. To God, be reminded that you want to grow our faith, which grows our knowledge, which grows our godliness. That God, our faith is directly connected to our good works. And we're called to go out and do works. God, not good works to earn salvation, but good works because we're saved. And just like Saul, who became Paul, God, that you catch hold of our hearts and our minds in such a way that it transforms everything we do and say. So God, be with us these next several weeks as we, as we study this word, as we ask it to be a, a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. As God, you use it to penetrate our hearts. God, help us be doer of this word and not just hearers. God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.